Got this her. conference okay. will now be recorded. There she is. Perfect. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the September 2nd, 2020 meeting of the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners. Um, I would like to start things off first um, with a roll call of who's present from the commissioners this evening, and then we'll do our Pledge of Allegiance. Can we do a roll call, please, um, Steve or Randy, whoever? Uh, Commissioner Walk. Here. Commissioner Mobilio. Here. Commissioner Seton. Here. Commissioner Kelly. Here. And Commissioner Morgan. Here. The gang's all here. If everyone would please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, I'd very much appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. I'd like to note that all public sessions of the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners are electronically recorded, filed, and posted on board docs for the public's access. That being said, we're going to move right into our agenda for this evening. And first on our agenda are the tabled August 5th, 2020 Board of Commissioner meeting minutes. Um, they are in the board's packet for consideration and possible action. Um, are there any questions or comments on the August 5th meeting minutes? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to um, approve the August 5th meeting minutes? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second from Commissioner Walk. Could I please have a roll call vote? Commissioner Walk. Aye. Commissioner Mobilio. Aye. Commissioner Seton. Aye. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. And Commissioner Morgan. Aye. Motion carries. Minutes passed. Next this evening for consideration and possible action, we have our August 19th, 2020 Board of Commissioner meeting minutes. They are in the board's packet for consideration this evening. I'll give the board a second to breeze through those if you need to. Are there any questions or comments on the August 19th meeting minutes from the board? That being said, uh, do I hear a motion to pass said meeting minutes? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll make a I'll second. second. Second from Commissioner Morgan. Um, can I have a roll call vote, please, Randy? Yep. Uh, Commissioner Walk. No vote because I was absent at the meeting. Abstain. Okay. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Seton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. And Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. All right. We have no presentations this evening. Um, we do have an ordinance um, which was previously advertised for adoption. It's the ordinance amending the codified ordinances of South Whitehall Township to add a new chapter 230 entitled Noise Control Ordinance, providing for greater control and more effective regulations regarding excessive sound and the sources of excessive sound within South Whitehall Township providing for enforcement, fines and penalties, and further providing for severability, failure to enforce, not a waiver, a repealer, and an effective date. Attorney Zader, would you like to take this one over? Be glad to, President Morgan. You may recall that at the prior meeting, the board authorized this particular ordinance for consideration, authorized the advertising. Uh, the advertising has taken place 
and therefore based upon the Sunshine Act and the First Class Code, it's properly before the board this evening for consideration and possible adoption. Uh, because of the nature of the type of ordinance, it's not technically a public hearing, but nonetheless, it still requires uh, discussion and action take place in a public meeting, and this will fulfill that requirement. So that said, uh, I think it would be appropriate to see if there's anyone from the public that has any question or comment. But first, if anyone needs to have the ordinance reintroduced, re-explained, I believe Mr. Harper is here to do so if there are any questions, but I know that he went through it thoroughly at the last meeting. Thank you, Attorney Zader. Um, I believe you're correct. We went through this at um, great length um, and had a lot of uh, good discussion. Uh, did any of the board um, wish to have it um, represented or any questions from the board before we go to the public? Commissioner Morgan, I, I, I'm not interested in having it represented. I just wanted to make a quick comment, uh, if that's okay. Um, Absolutely. Th this ordinance is by no means perfect, but like most you know, initial legis legislation, new legislation, it's a a great, in my opinion, great starting point. And to the extent that changes need to be made in the future, um, we have now a framework to work with. So while I would love to see firework, uh, the firework provision brought even earlier, uh, as far as the limitations on what type time fireworks can be can be um, displayed or set off, and some other minor provisions of this ordinance. I am I am happy to vote in favor of this uh, to get something on the books, a solid ordinance to work with, and to the extent that we need to make tweaks and changes to in the future, uh, I think it's important that we get this passed on the books, and uh, I think it'll it'll answer many, if not all, the problems that we've had in the township as far as noise goes, and then we can work on it to perfect it from from now going into the future. Thank you. Any, any other thoughts or comments from the board before I'd open it up to the public? Yeah, this is uh, Commissioner Walt. So um, I didn't hear the presentation at the last meeting. I, I have read it in detail. Uh, I also support the ordinance uh, entirely. Um, if it's all right, I'd just like to ask uh, a few questions for clarification, mainly, um, regarding the practicality in certain situations. And I, I don't think it'll take long. I just want to give a couple couple thoughts. So under the, the first section, uh, radio, TV, music, um, and, and this would apply to other sections, how is a disturbance defined? And in other words, it says there shall be no disturbance. And it says, you know, it shouldn't be across the uh, neighbor's property line. Um, almost goes to like the degree of how disturbing is disturbing. You know, it might be disturbing to the neighbor, but the police have to weigh in, et cetera. Yes. That, um, uh, Tom, Tom or Glenn, do you want to take that? Sure, I'll take it. Um, basically, what's going to happen is when a complaint comes in, uh, regarding something like noise disturbance over a property boundary line, um, the officer, when they go out there, if they're at the property boundary and they can hear it, um, you know, it constitutes a violation. Now, that's using mainly what is called the, here somewhere, the plain audible method, which means any sound that can be detected by a person using their own faculties. Um, so, I mean, if they're they're there and it's causing a disturbance, like I have a situation now that I received a phone call on where a gentleman goes out to his yard constantly and, you know, he wants to enjoy his yard. And every time he's out there, the neighbor constantly blasts music. Um, and it's disturbing, obviously, to the peace that the person wants to have in their yard. Uh, so there is discretion code and, and code enforcement will have um, in dealing with these. And um, at the last meeting, uh, we did discuss a lot about, uh, Chief Dorian and myself, a lot about education. Um, we really want to educate the residents of the township so that they understand the ordinance and that our goal uh, mainly is to get compliance so that, you know, 
people can you know enjoy their property uh, and others can enjoy enjoy theirs. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and I just got a couple more. I'm just 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 won't go on with a long list of questions. So no still, still in the same in the same category. Um, th this section it says uh, the noise disturbances. It reads like 24/7. It's not like you can make noise during the day and then at a certain hour you have to stop. Is is, is that correct? That section is one radio. Yes, that is correct in section one. Um, as you'll see, um, you know, it's no different than somebody who wants to enjoy time at the park and, you know, somebody's there blasting music or has a loudspeaker or something uh, going on. So this part of the ordinance, and this is pretty similar to, if not all, the majority of the ordinances that I've researched regarding uh, noise. And um, this section is pretty much similar in the majority of them. Um, as you alluded to in the other sections, you'll see there's there's different time frames involved um, and other things like that. So yeah, the first section mainly, if it's crossing the uh, property boundary line or disturbing someone in a park or whatever. So there's a lot of discretion with the police. And like I said before, the education is a big factor here just to say, you know, hey, you know, we've got to work together on this. Okay. And the last question goes to like uh, repeat offenses, even within a given day or like on an ongoing basis. So I'm sure you encounter this situation where there's loud music, there's a complaint, there's a police visit, the music's turned down or off, the police leave, the loud music restarts, another complaint is phoned in, the police go again. So that could occur on any given day or any, any given night. Um, and I realize there's a $100 penalty if the, if the person is cited. Uh, and then we, we do have people in the township who, who do this on an ongoing basis. Um, let's say every single weekend, and you know the same the same scenario is is repeated. So I I realize how you handle it on a on a given day as best you can. Um, I guess my question goes a little bit more to the penalty side. Is it simply going to be a series of a hundred dollar fines? But like, what if it goes on all summer long, but where the same person is uh, making the disturbance? Uh, basically, what happens there is um, there are provisions. I mean, the hundred dollar fine is the violation violation ticketing process. Um, a lot of times, the officers uh, have their own districts that they work in. They know the properties very well. They know the residents very well in the districts. And what happens is, and you are correct. I for thirty years, you just laid out exactly what I dealt with, where you know the officer will go there. They'll tell them to turn it down. As soon as they get around the block, it's turned back up again. And then they got to come back. So, you know, there is provisions in this thing where, yes, education, yes, a violation ticket. And then there's notices. There's also uh, citations. So there is a, at a point where at the officer's discretion, they can issue a citation and that person would go in front of the magistrate um, and it would get addressed there, which those fines go up to $1,000. So the hundred dollar fine, you know, can be the starting point, you know, education, hundred dollar fine. And then, you know, if they continue to do it every weekend or whatever, to where they're just annoying, disturbing the peace, et cetera, you know, they can go to court and uh, face up to a thousand dollar fine. All right. Thank you very much for answering the question. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions from the board? All right, I will open it up. I don't see any questions in the chat, but if there is anybody in the I, audience that has any oh. questions regarding the ordinance. Yeah, Tori, I just turned the chat on for everybody now that you requested oh. it, so they can chat now Sorry. if they would like. We look like Brian Height sure. has a comment. Sure, Brian. Uh, I have a question. It, it's in regards to uh, the engine compression release brakes or jake brakes on large trucks and to see if they are covered under this ordinance, uh, you know, especially if they're on a certain part of the road in front of a residence, and it's a habitual thing. They're for safety, but sometimes they're going a little slow to be engaging that brake, and they're 
they're pretty loud if you know what I mean. The day brakes are those things you hear on the big trucks, they go ah, when they're coming through a slow area. So I wondered if that was covered in this. Thank you. Tom, can you cover that one? Um, I don't believe it is. I think I'm going to, unless uh, Chief Dorn, Dorney thinks differently, but um, that no, is something. I don't believe that's going to be covered in the noise ordinance. I mean, it's a safety yeah. issue for the trucks. It's It's got a purpose. It's got a legitimate purpose. Uh, now, if somebody that lives in the neighborhood just wants to harass your neighbors and drives up and down 10 times in a row and does it, then we're going to address it. But um, just as a truck driving by, trying to slow down and stop with a jake brake, that's not going to be enforced. Okay, thank you. All right. Mr. Stolt. Yes, good morning, commissioners. I believe, oh, Jesus, good evening. Um, I have a question about how this uh, proposed ordinance was distributed and made for the public. I looked in the last, and I had a discussion with Randy Cope about this this, this afternoon. And um, I, I looked in the past two Parkland presses after the commissioner's meeting, and there was nowhere within the Parkland press that this ordinance was going to be, was published. I went on the South Whitehall website and nowhere was this ordinance up for public view. Um, only did, after talking with uh, Randy and um, did, I, did I realize that I could go to the board docs to find this document um, from last, the last commissioner's meeting. So, and I know Randy said that it was published in the morning call. Well, I don't get the morning call. It's, I don't get it. I'm supposed to get it with Parkland Press occasionally, uh, but if they decide to deliver it or not deliver it, I, I may or may not get it. So my question for you is, why wasn't this up on the South Whitehall Township website for the public to view? And if it was in the morning call, how would most people don't get the morning call anymore? How is somebody supposed to be able to read this with and and have comment about this when they don't know it's there? So uh I'll I'll start on this one, and then I think Joe, maybe I'll I'll hand it over to you to um, give some input on um, sure. publication requirements. But uh, Lee, this is this ordinance has been talked about at oh my God, I numerous of our public meetings. Um, certainly, I, I know you're a you're a regular at many of our meetings, so you I, I'm sure you were well aware that it was in the works and and that there was a draft ordinance out there. So certainly, um, and there's been quite a few newspaper articles that have mentioned this ordinance as well. So if, if somebody couldn't find it on board docs or somewhere specifically in on the township website, you know, obviously all they would need to do is call the township to get a copy of it. That's, that's always an option. Um, we have had also uh, various meetings with um, crime watch groups um, who we've provided information on the ordinance. So from a publication and notification standpoint, I think we've we've truly gone up and beyond. Um, but what I'll do is I'll hand it over to Joe Zader, our attorney, to kind of go over um, our requirements for publication and why we use the morning call. Um, and maybe that'll answer some of those questions. So Joe, I'll hand it to you. Thank you, President Morgan. I'd be glad to. Uh, first of all, Lee, any advertisement that would have been in any publication would be very short. Basically, it would be the paragraph that Commissioner Morgan read at the beginning of this proceeding that discussed the noise ordinance. So the detail wouldn't be there. For anyone that wants to get the detail, they would need to either come to a public meeting and ask questions or contact the township for an opportunity to read the entire proposed ordinance. But that would not be in any advertising anywhere at any time. But as far as the Parkland Press versus the Morning Call, uh, ordinarily, for most ordinances, uh, it does appear in the Parkland Press. The reason that that did not occur here was one of timing. And specifically, because the noise ordinance is something that many residents and the commissioners, in fact, have been wanting this to move along quickly, the decision, I believe, was made at the last meeting, I think you were there, that this would be advertised for possible adoption at this meeting tonight. That meeting was two weeks ago. The requirement under the Sunshine Act is that the advertising in a newspaper of general circulation, and for 
our locality, that would mean either the Parkland Press or the Morning Call. It has to be advertised in a newspaper of general circulation, a minimum of seven days and a maximum of 60 days prior to the meeting at which it would be considered for possible adoption. That's a Sunshine Act requirement. So with a meeting tonight, it would need it to have been, if we had used the Parkland Press, it would had to have been in last Wednesday, but as you know, Parkland Press comes out on a Thursday and last Thursday would not have been sufficient because it would be six days instead of seven. And so that means that to meet the requirement and be in the Parkland Press, it would have had to have been in 13 days ago, but 13 days ago was the day after the last commissioner's meeting. And of course, whether it be my staff or township staff proceeding to work out the advertising with the newspaper, that process could not have even started until the very day it would need to have been in the Parkland Press. So in this situation, it needed to be in the morning call to make it for this evening's meeting. And while not applicable to the noise ordinance, I would also add that in situations where there's a public hearing required, and ordinarily that means an ordinance under the municipality's planning code, zoning, saldo, depending on circumstances, perhaps floodplain or stormwater ordinances. And there are scattered a uh, few other ordinances under the law that are required to have a public hearing. There, the advertiser requirements are more detailed and at a minimum, there have to be at least two publications in successive weeks uh, between that seven day and 60 day window. And so depending upon how the calendar falls uh, and depending upon the timing that the board wishes something to move forward, uh, that could be an even further aggravating factor in terms of getting it into the Parkland press, depending on what the situation is at the time. Uh, so that's the long and the short of it. Lee, did that answer your question? It, it, it does, but it doesn't, it doesn't address why this wasn't on the front page of the South Whitehall Township um, website for people to, to see. I mean, I, only, I, and I attend all the meetings. And and I you know forgot about going to board docs and and printing it out and taking a look at it, which I haven't printed out, but I looked at it briefly this afternoon when I had the opportunity. But again, just in for I just don't understand why this wasn't front and center on the South Whitehall Township website for the the residents to see. Leah, it, it's not necessarily, it's not normal practice for us to put a, an ordinance that's not final on the front page of our website. However, I will say that, like I said before, before Attorney Zader spoke, um, this, this ordinance has had a lot of attention and, and we're well aware of that. Um, we also posted um, the actions to be taken on um, the, the police's Facebook page. Um, it was on the Nextdoor app. Um, like I said, we've had numerous meetings, we've had numerous um, newspaper articles about it. So w without a doubt, there this has been out and about in the public, um, probably more than any other ordinance that we've had um, come before us, to be honest with you. And I, I understand that, and I think that's all well and good, and I, I agree with you that all those things were done. I'm just, you know, I guess it, my point is, and I'll, I'll, I'll rest at this, is that um, this is an important thing for all the residents that affect all the residents of South Whitehall Township. And as transparency as we, as we should be, that I just thought this would be on the website. Because when I thought about it and wanted to review it, I didn't think about board docs. And maybe that's just a bat on me. But, you know, that being said, I went to the Whitehall, South Whitehall Township to go and look at it, and it wasn't there. So that, that's that's my last comment about, about that, though. So. Um, I do have a question about the ordinance. Uh, in my brief reading of it, it does address garbage pickup, but um, the question I have is a lot of times, um, as I live on Manchester Road, I'm in earshot from the Target, the Weiss, um, and some other office buildings. And I do hear at four o'clock in the morning, garbage trucks picking up and dumping um, uh, you know, the trash. So I, in reading this briefly, does that address, I know Mr. Petro's complaint behind, um, you know, the giant right, right behind his house, but does this address those scheduled pickups that happen at four o'clock in the morning? Uh, yes, it, uh, 
basically falls under um, number eight. Um, the delivery uh, loading operations, it does include the garbage cans, dumpsters are similar. So that um, within 250 feet of a residential, those time constrictions fall in uh, to place. Okay. And and I, I, I didn't see it, and maybe this is a, a commission, uh, question for Chief Dorney. What about um, mufflers that make a lot of loud noise? <laughs> in terms of cars, I mean, uh, Mr. Height yeah, that, talked about the, the the brakes on trucks, but what about the mufflers that are that are up and down the streets with the loud noises that don't need to be that loud? That is something we could use this for, um, as well as the vehicle code. There's some sections in there with the inspection violations that the officers can do citations for that. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. No, no problem. Thanks, Lee. Uh, Mr. Hodges. Hi, uh, Rob Hodges, 1707 Pence Crossing. Um, first, I want to agree with Commissioner Mo Mobilio's statement. This is something that's uh, that we've needed for a while. And although it may not end up being perfect, we don't know, we'll, we'll use it and see what happens. It at least sets a framework that we can build on in the future. So I agree with him. Um, my question, I guess, is sort of along the lines of what Mr. Height and Mr. Salt already asked um, about trucks and cars and garbage trucks. Um, what about construction sites or uh, residential construction, you know, adding on to houses or, or decks um, or commercial construction sites? Is, this, is there any coverage for, for those making lots of noise? Thank you. Uh, yes, and back to Mr. Salt's question, under 14A is where exhaust systems are addressed. Um, to your question, sir, uh, 15, uh, number 15 in the ordinance talks about construction, um, operating or permitting the operation of any tools, equipment used in construction, drilling, demolition, uh, between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. the following day, on weekdays and, and Saturdays, or any time, or at any time on a Sunday or a holiday. These are exempt times, such that the sound therefore creates a noise disturbance across the real property line. So they shouldn't be starting till seven. They should be ending at nine, and they should not be working any time on a Sunday or a holiday. Does that answer your questions, Mr. Hodges? Looks like he said thank you. All right, it's good. Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, you got it. You got it. Any other questions from the public? Uh, Commissioner, uh, this is Joe Petro. I have just two quick questions from my neighbors, if I could. Sure, um, Joe. First is, uh, how, how is this distributed or advertised? Um, in other words, how do, how do uh, institutions find out that these, these regulations exist? You're, you're referring to the education part of it once it's final? Yes. Once it's passed, yes. Okay. Yes. Tom, I'll let you answer to that one. Um, basically, uh, I will let them know that it's been passed. Um, and I, I'm sure I'll be having discussion with a lot of these places as to what they need to implement. Um, so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve uh, so they can get the word out to, you know, their distributors, et cetera. So that, you know, these are the, this is the time frame. You know, we don't expect you here any other time, et cetera. So there'll be a little bit of distribution on my behalf to, you know, anybody who asks for it, obviously, and, uh, you know, talking to several of the businesses involved. Oh, Tom, thank you. I, and I was, I, I should have mentioned before I started to, to thank you for all the work you've done on this. It's a terrific, uh, certainly a terrific start to, a, a, you know, for a problem that exists, you know, in, in many townships, actually. The other, the other question was asked uh, was, I assume the, the uh, you know, if, if noise occurs, uh, the enforcement, which is the responsibility of the of the, the store or the, the institution that's creating it, but how, how is it, in, how is the enforcement, is it, in other words, will it be up to the individual homeowners to call the police or is there another mechanism 
you know, my reluctance to, to have police officers pulled away from their normal duties. But uh, is there a, an enforcement sort of plan? Know. Glenn or and Tom, I, I I think Glenn, you know, and and Joe, we've I, it, it is important that that you contact the police in in this case. They're they're well aware of the ordinance and um, are ready and um, know how to respond. But I'll I'll let Glenn or or Tom kind of talk a little bit more about the enforcement end of of this. Yeah, Joe, if we essentially are going to rely on our public to let us know that there's a disturbance and then when we get there to, to hear the actual disturbance that's when the officer uses their discretion based on their location the time of day everything else everything that falls in the ordinance to make that determination whether it's an educational based conversation with the person that's making the, the the disturbance or the noise or whether it's a citation that's going to be issued so um it, it definitely has to be heard by the officer um but you know, we can potentially, as we drive around, if we hear something, we could take the proactive stance on it, which we would. However, typically with noise complaints, we're getting it from a complaint from somebody who's obviously disturbed by it. Because if we don't get a complaint by from a neighbor and the officer just pulls up because it annoys them, well, it doesn't matter whether it annoys us because it's not the disturbance for us. We're not the resident who would have to be the person to essentially initiate the complaint. Uh, thank you. And I, I, I'll tell, I mean, that was the concern on many of the neighbors, you know, or, or, you know, and I'll just tell them that not to hesitate to call the police and, uh, and report it. Yeah, absolutely. Joe. I mean, that's what we're here for. I mean, we can't, we can't be everywhere all the time and to, to be able to address the issues that our neighborhoods have concerns with, we need to know about it. So, edu you know, the, the knowledge is key for us and that's what we need. Okay. That's, that's, that's great. Thank, thanks, Jude. And Tom as well. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Joe. Any any other um, questions from the public? All righty. That being said, um, Attorney Zader, then I think we're, um, correct me if I'm wrong, we're in a position to move for final adoption of said ordinance. Is that correct? Yes, it is, President Morgan. Thank you. All right. Um, with the questions being asked, information provided, um, we do are in the position now for final adoption of the um, the noise control ordinance. I would need a motion for adoption. Do I hear said motion? Motion to approve. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Uh, I think that was Commissioner Stetton. Yes? No? Yep. All right. Great. And we'll need a roll call vote on this one. Please, Randy. Sure. No problem. Commissioner Walk. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Mobilio. Aye. Commissioner Stetton. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Kelly. Aye. And Commissioner Morgan. Aye. Motion carries, and and again, just to um, mirror some of the other comments, uh, a big thank you to everyone involved in putting this together, including um, the public involvement and comments. Um, very important, um, and I think this is the beginning to um, a very helpful document um, to uh, for quality of life. And uh, thanks again for every everybody who put work into this. All right, this evening. We have um, no resolutions for consideration, um, and we do have a few motions for consideration. The first motion is a motion to approve the budget amend amendment to the state highway aid fund. Uh, Randy, would that be you? Would you be handling this this evening? Uh, that's going to be Steve actually. Steve? I'm going to do the, Steve. I'm gonna do the I'm going to oh. do the finance piece, and then the road guys will do the road piece, because oh, I don't know right. roads. And Sounds great. <laughs> they know some finance. <laughs> um, so there's um, kind of two pieces of this. The, the next motion also goes toward toward this project. So um, just kind of as an overview, catch up. Um, during last year's budget process, um, the board had authorized us to, to budget for about $2.8 million of potential road repairs with the intention of starting to um, gather a larger chunk of road repairs during a year 
but during a period to get some better pricing. Um, when we go out to market, we're in the past, we've been doing a million to a million five of road repairs straight out of cash. Um, so we were looking at potentially going, bulking more roads together, getting a, more roads for our buck and taking a loan potentially to do that, to spread the cost of the road over more of the life of the road. Um, so during that construction or during that budget process, we budgeted 2.8. Um, in road repairs, but we really budgeted only for the loan payment of $380,000 for that. So um, that was the thought process. As we got into 2019, we had this little COVID thingy happen to us, um, which made us obviously step back, look at our um, finances and how that could affect us, um, hold a lot of projects, which included that $380,000 of roads. Um, so that's kind of how we got to this point. Why this, the, there's one road obviously that we're taking from that list that we're going to propose next that we do. So um, one of the options that opened up to us, uh, to us during the year was um, we had budgeted to purchase a leaf vacuum in the state highway aid fund. Um, that vacuum would cost about we had basically 80,000 of cash budgeted to go toward that vacuum um, during this during 2020. Um, we were able to find a used vacuum, if everybody remembers, a couple months ago um, from our neighbors at Upper Mount Kunji for $8,750. So we were able to save um, that overall, which we, we did allocate out of the general fund at that point in time. Um, so that freed up $80,000 of general or state highway aid money that can be used for this project um, that actually we've run this by the state highway aid guys that we work with um, and they've actually already approved how we're going to deal with this road and that it's a it's a, a solid state highway aid project so what we're asking today in this motion is to um, reallocate the eighty thousand dollars that we got allocated for the leaf sweeper in major machinery and equipment and allocate that $80,000 to fund this project in the um, street construction line item of State Highway 8. So those are just moving between those two line items. And I think that is all I have. If we have any questions, feel free. Thank you, Steve. Um, any questions from the board on this request for a transfer of allocation? Steve, I just had a, a question. Um, sure, Diane. Since um, there was the loan payment budget of 380,000, so that that still remains in that fund, also. Um, that yeah, so that was budgeted in capital, that 380,000 um, dollars. If uh, and yes, we will. The, the plan is not to spend that 380,000 out of um, the general fund. Yes. Okay. Thank you. you got it. Any other questions from the board? All right. Any questions from the public? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve um, the budget amendment to the State Highway Aid Fund? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll make a second. Second from Commissioner Morgan. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Randy? Sure. Commissioner Walk. Aye. Commissioner Mobilio. Aye. Commissioner Seton. Aye. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. And Commissioner Morgan. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. All right. Next, um, a motion for consideration requesting permission to proceed with the new street paving project. Randy and Herb, what do you got for yeah, I'm us? Gonna I'm going to let Herb present this. He did a lot of the legwork for this project and, and really got it moving, shuffled a few things around to, to make this happen this year. Uh, really happy with how Herb's you know worked this out here. So I'll turn it over to him. This section is down by the, uh, we'll call it the Trexler Park area of Cedar Crest and uh, Parkview, I believe, Herb. Is that the, the correct street name? Yes. Yep, Parkview. Okay. 
All right, good evening, commissioners. Uh, Public Works is seeking approval to pave Chew Street from 31st Street to Cedar Crest Boulevard, College Heights Boulevard, 31st Street to Cedar Crest Boulevard, and Parkview Avenue from 31st Street to Chu Street. We would like to award the milling to Broccolini Construction in the amount of $8,550, and also would like to award the spraying of the PA tack coat to AMS for the amount of $2,320, and the line striping to A1 line striping for the amount of $3,113.20. The paving and the ceiling will be done by Public Works. The estimated amount of 9.5 millimeter blacktop is 900 ton and will cost 65,000. This project will cost about $78,983.20 and is budgeted in the state highway aid. All right. Thank you, Herb. Um, are there any questions for Herb on this project from the board? Timing, timing for this, Herb? Uh, would be starting on Wednesday the 8th. I, oh, Wednesday oh, the 9th, oh. sorry. Okay. And, and uh, completion, uh, like estimated? Uh, we would be wrapping the whole thing up the following week by Friday. Oh, okay. All right. That's, Good to know. That's barring the line striping. We have to coordinate weather-wise with them, but we will be putting temporary marks down in-house until they can put the permanent markings down. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Herb. Any other questions from the board on this particular project? I just had a quick question, Herb. Um, so is there going to be a total closing of that intersection or will you just have one lane close at a time? When we do the milling, we're going to stage and close it down block for block as we do the milling. And for this, when we go to put the leveling course down, we have to close it completely because we have to spray tacking oil down and we do not want that on the residents cars because we will believe me it's tough to get off so we will shut it down completely but it will open up that night again so i'm just thinking with school buses so you'll be detouring around that area then yes and we will reach out to parkland school district and we will also be passing a letter out to all the residents tomorrow if everything goes through tonight to give them a heads up that we will be moving in next Wednesday to start the milling and we're going to set out the process and how long it will take for them also. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, any questions from the public? All right, that being said, um, um, do I hear a motion this evening to grant permission to proceed with the new street paving project as described from Herb? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? A second. Second from Commissioner Walk. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Randy? Sure, Commissioner Walk. Aye. Commissioner Mobilio. Aye. Commissioner Seton. Aye. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. And Commissioner Morgan. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Herb. Thank you. Um, Thanks, a lot, everyone. Of, a lot of notifications to be made there. That's happening quick. Um, all right. We have nothing this evening um, under correspondence and information items. Uh, nothing under direction and discussion item. Uh, we do have some old business um, status items. Uh, Randy, I'll let you hit off if there's any updates on those. I know um, Steve had to step away for a minute, so we might not be able to get any uh, campus renovation or credit card updates tonight, um, but I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Do you have any updates on, on any of the old business, where's dam, campus renovation, or credit card? 
where where's dam is is still in the dep permitting stage there's there's really nothing new to report there um as soon as we do have information we will of course share that with the board um unfortunately i don't have anything to add on the credit cards we would need steve to touch on that i know he's been working diligently on it and working out a few final kinks um before going live with that and the campus renovation project um i've been told it's on track um in in terms of timing in terms of um the budget so everything in in that sense is looking good they're they're starting to uh get the the access road in um the basin is pretty much on grade the liner's been put in so the stormwater controls are are uh, starting to get finalized out there which is great uh, the new public meeting uh room addition that has been uh constructed uh, the the shells up so uh, the roof's going to be going on soon. Um, I know they're working on a lot of the the drywall, the spackling. So a lot of those finishing interior finishes are, are starting to come to fruition here. So it's really starting to uh, to actually look like a, a, a renovated building now. It's not all ripped up anymore. So moving forward. Great. Thanks, Randy. Um, any questions for Randy? Uh, Commissioner Morgan, yeah. I, I don't have a question for, for Randy. I just wanted to make a, a quick comment um, about Weir's Dam because I just, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of chatter um, on social media about, you know, what we're doing about the referendum and, and what the effect of the referendum is on the plans from the township. Just so everyone is aware, um, the referendum anything that we've done uh this board and i can't speak for the previous board but the board that exists as it does now um has not in any way impaired or affected the vote that was taken previously uh with regard to money allocated for weir's dam there's a lot of chatter that i've seen about um you know well they're not honoring the voters uh, vote they're not um the commissioners are not doing what the voters agreed to do or, or voted to do but the reality is that that money that has been allocated by way of referendum is not has not been used has not been utilized there's nothing nothing that we've done has affected that six hundred thousand dollars yes we've talked including myself talked uh, uh, at length about whether we're willing to spend more than what the voters had approved by way of that $600,000. Um, but at the end of the day, if the DEP permit comes through and they say, okay, $600,000 is going to get the job done, Weir's Dam is going to be saved, renovated, everything is going to be done that needs to be done. Uh, all that I've ever advocated for, and I can't speak for everyone on this board, but I think I get a sense of what everyone has spoken about, and that is that if the if Weir's Dam can be saved, uh, renovated, whatever needs to be done to it to preserve it, in for the amount of money that the voters have approved, it will be. No one has advocated to somehow overturn that vote. All we've spoken about is whether in excess of $600,000 is going to be somehow set aside or, or allocated or whatever for Weir's Dam. So, um, I just want to make that clear. I don't know that, you know, me stating that's going to going to ease anyone's concerns. But at the end of the day, uh, I have not, and whether it's been misinterpreted uh, uh, because of something I've said, then I apologize. But I am not advocating in any way uh, trying to somehow backdoor overturn what the voters had approved uh, as far as that six hundred thousand dollar allocation. That, in my opinion, is outside of our control, outside of anything that we can do, that was a, a approved by the by the, the voters. Um, all that I've ever advocated for is don't spend more than what the voters approved. Uh, so to the extent that that permit and doing what we need to do to Weir's Dam is going to cost more than $600,000, I would not be in favor of it because quite frankly, that's not what the voters voted for. So um, I don't know that that clears it up for anybody, I'm happy to answer questions about if I've made somehow, you know, misstated or some somehow misinterpreted my position. But at the end of the day, 
there is nothing, I don't believe there's anything that I can do or anyone on this board can do to overturn what the voters already approved and nor would I advocate doing that. That in my opinion is set in stone. It is only whether we should spend more than what has been approved by the voters uh, to do anything for Weir's Dam. So just throwing it out there. Thanks, Commissioner Mobilio. I think I think that was a very good explanation of where we sit as far as the status of Weir's Dam. Um, and you're absolutely right. Um, you know, nothing has changed um, since that referendum. No, no new decisions were made. And the fact that the work hasn't been done is because it's pending um, decisions to be made by that final permit from DEP. So um, thank you for that. Um, any other questions or comments? Commissioner Morgan, I do have a comment I'd like to make. I just wanted to um, thank Lee Salt for his comment earlier regarding the um, access to the ordinance regarding the noise ordinance adopting. Um, I actually had two residents reach out to me and ask me um, where it was as well. I was able to find it and email it to them. Um, but uh, that's certainly something that we hear often is, is a little bit of frustration from the public with finding the information that they're looking for. And I appreciate the comments that the public gives to us. Um, and I think that's something that this board should consider. Um, I know that it was a draft, but certainly we could post it as a draft onto our homepage, um, something that's coming up for a meeting, because the important thing would be to have easy access for the residents, for the things that are coming before this board that will greatly affect our residents. Um, so I would like to make a motion tonight that when we do have a pending ordinance like this, something that we're putting a legal notice on, um, a lot of people do not receive a newspaper. Uh, and I think it would be a huge service to the community to post this on our front page of our website, easily accessible uh, for our residents. So I'd like to make that motion tonight. I, I, I certainly have no problem with that. I don't know if a motion is necessary. Happy to do that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think especially with our new website um, coming online here shortly, I think we'll have a better opportunity instead of having ordinances um, uh, built into just our board docs that we'll have some better um, platforms to be able to provide information that's a little bit more visual. So I think that'll be um, a huge help. Uh, but I mean, I, I don't see any problem with us being able to do that moving forward. Um, I, I do, I do feel strongly that you know I don't want anybody thinking we didn't post things correctly or provide the proper information. But certainly, if there's more information we can put out there that makes it easier to access, then that's the whole point behind the new website. We can certainly um, look at doing that and make that happen. I'll, I'll, I'll feed to the rest of the board here. To the other commissioners for any thoughts or comments on that too. I'd like to make a comment if I could uh, to the commissioners. Sure. Given the motion that Commissioner Kelly has suggested, uh, my recommendation to the board be that it is an informal policy and informal understanding with staff that that's going to occur. But I would caution against formally motioning it and seconding it and voting it, and here's why. Uh, if you do so, one could uh, take the position that failure to do so is a violation of a township obligation and subject the ordinance to uh, a challenge. And unlike the municipality's planning code that has a process to deal with such challenges, after enactment to really void procedural defects, uh, that would not necessarily be the case here. And so I would hate to see somebody 18 months after it's enacted, uh, get off on a technicality, if you will. Uh, the law establishes what the procedures are. If the township informally, based upon uh, informal understanding with staff, wants to have additional transparency, I think that's great, it's certainly fine but I would not impose it on yourselves as a legal requirement. And I think, I thank you, Attorney Zader, and I, I think that was kind of what I was trying to get at. I don't think a, a motion is required to provide more information. And, you know, certainly now if there's some legal technicalities that we could um, be subject to. So um, that being said, I think, you know, from a, from a 
township standpoint, you know, we will certainly provide as much information, get the information out there as best we can. And again, I think with our new website, we're going to be able to do that in, in an even more streamlined manner. Um, but to formally um, post them or make a motion to say we'll have them all posted um, may put us in a, um, some legal predicament. So, um, well, thank Diane, you, so you can either hold your motion or we can vote on it. Um, but I, I, I don't think from a legal standpoint that it's good to hold that motion. Thank you, Mr. Zader, for your explanation. Um, in light of your legal advice, I do withdraw the motion. But I would like to see an emphasis put on um, having as much information available to our residents as we possibly can, easily accessible on our homepage. And just to be clear, I was not at all suggesting don't be transparent about it, not suggesting don't put it on the website. I think it's great that if that's done, uh, let the residents see what the township is considering with ordinances. Um, just avoid making it a legal requirement. Understood. Thank you. Good. Any other um, courtesy of the floor items? All right. That being said. Commissioner Morgan, there's three people yes. uh, lined up under oh. courtesy. Oh, I apologize. I see them through now. Uh, Mr. Height. Good evening. There, Brian. Uh, Brian Height, 1273 Eck Road. I would like to inquire as to why all the no parking signs on Eck Road south of the railroad tracks to Crackersport and a majority of the no parking signs north of the railroad tracks to Chapman Road were removed. Uh, Glenn, do Herb, you have that or, one? Um, or Herb? Herb or Mike Elias, do you guys um, believe that would have been um, Public Works was, unless you guys directed staff to go out there and take those down for some reason? To my recollection, still sign up? no, we did not take those down. So that could be on the contractor that's out there. This is the first I knew those signs were down. But we will definitely check it tomorrow morning. And when they are missing, I believe, Brian, that they're not there, we will contact the contractor out there working on the warehouse and ask what happened to them and get them put back up. There, there are some that are laying on, on the, in the right-of-way. There's a pile of them at the corner of Eck and Crackersport. It looks like they were just unbolted and thrown there in a pile. So it occurred over, the, uh, I noticed it Monday on my walk. You know, I walk this road every day and I just was noticing that there's a whole bunch of them down now. So thank you. No problem, Brian. We will check this out first thing tomorrow morning and get a hold of whoever we have to to get those put back up. Thanks. Thanks, Brian, for bringing it to our attention. Thanks, Herb. All right, Manley, what do you got for us this evening? Well, uh, I live on at 1991 Molinero Drive, and I noticed last week that a whole bunch of green markings were on my street and a whole bunch of blue markings, and the blue markings actually ran into my yard. And I was wondering what's going on. Oh. I can put that in commission one Morgan. Manley, that's right, Herb, it's all you. That's for a PA1 call. That's for any contractor or resident doing any work that's going to be digging. They have to, by law, call that in. And we do have to mark all our utilities. Even if they're in your yard, they should be within the right of way part. But we do have to mark that with paint, flags, some sort. So when they're digging, they know there is a utility there. So what you're telling me is some contractor is going to be digging up my road? Uh, not necessarily. It doesn't always mean they're going to be digging up. They could be boring under the road. I'm not exactly sure without the PA ones in front of me which one it is. But there is going to be some kind of work there being done, yes. Okay, because the markings go all the way, you know, for two blocks. Yep. That means they could be boring on the side of the road, putting something in underground, but there is definitely some kind of construction that's going to be going on there. 
Oh, okay. Well, when the line came into my yard, that's what I wondered. Is somebody going to be digging up my yard? Okay, thank you for the answer. No problem, sir. Thanks, Manley. Thanks, Herb. Um, Mr. Soult. Yeah, hi, Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner Morgan. Um, first of all, I'd like to just thank the commissioners for hearing my uh, my little rant before about the the, uh, the documents and being on the website. And hopefully, with the new website that we that 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 solved. But I'd also like to thank uh, she's not here, but Renee for reaching out to me. I left a message this morning. She called me back, and and she contacted Randy, and Randy called me. So I really appreciate Renee and Randy taking the time out of their day to to spend with me and and talking about a couple things. And also Greg, that I chatted with Greg today, and I uh, just wanted to thank the the members of the township and the staff to help uh, you know answering answering the citizens' concerns, and that's uh, that's important, and I really thank them for that. That's all I have. Thank you. Oh, Lee, that was that was very kind. It, it's good to hear um, wonderful things like that. Thank you for sharing. All right, anybody else? I'm looking in the chat. I don't see any other messages. All right. That being said, um, our invoices and purchasing requisitions have been reviewed by our township manager and our director of finance. Um, we do need a motion this evening to authorize that our checks be issued to pay our bills as tabulated. Do I hear said motion? So moved. Mission, uh, motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll make a second. Second from Commissioner Morgan. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Randy? Yep. Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Seton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. And Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. We have no executive session planned for this evening. And I would like to note, oh my goodness, it's only 8.02. I need a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second. Second, second from Commissioner Seton. All in favor? Aye. 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 I, uh, I hear lots of eyes, and you know this is a short meeting, probably because Joe Zader is at the beach. That's why. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. All right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Stay safe and well. Good night to everyone. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.